our Savior lives, we can always face tomorrow. Amen. 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 Are you happy to be here? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You want me to sing my song again? If you're happy and you know, raise your Bible. Oh, that's just some Bibles today. Uh -huh. No Bibles today? Raise it up. Okay, I'm going to borrow somebody my Bible. Please, you can borrow my Bible for today. God bless you. Raise your Bible up and begin to flip the pages. Flip it, flip it, flip it. Uh -huh. If I say stop, then you stop. Uh -huh. Flip it. Flip the pages. Flip it. Uh -huh. Something's going to happen today. Flip the pages. If I say stop, then you stop. Stop! Stop it, stop. Yeah. Open it wide. Yeah. Open it wide. You open it. Mm -hmm. I am going to find somebody to read Jeff. Read where your thumb is. Stand up and read it. Where your thumb is, read it. Mm -hmm. We are hearing it. Psalm 98, Psalm 98 verse, verse, 9. verse 9. Let's hear. For he's come to judge the earth. He comes to judge what? The earth. And then? With righteousness. With what? Righteousness. With what? Righteousness. With what? Righteousness. And? He shall judge the world. He shall judge the world. Continue. And the peoples with equity. And with the people with equity. Please sit down. With righteousness, he's coming to judge the earth. And the people with equity. Say, I am, I am righteous. I am righteous. I am righteous. So when he comes to judge the earth, those who are righteous like he himself, what he's going to do with those people? He take them away. Say, I am righteous, I am righteous. by the blood of Jesus. You see what flipping pages can do? You to read where your thumb is. Why some some? Yeah. Let's go. Uh -huh. Oh God. Oh God. Off. You have cast us off. You have scattered us. You have scattered us, oh God. You have been displeased. Oh, we are, you have been displeased, God. Mm -hmm. You all oh, turn yourself to us again. Turn yourself unto us one more time, oh God. We plead thee. Mm -hmm. You have made the earth to tremble. You have, hey, God can make this earth tremble. You know why the God tremble? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have broken it. Go to two verses earlier. Two, two lines earlier. No, no, no. Two, two lines earlier. Two lines. Mm -hmm. two lines. You yeah, have scattered us. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Oh God. You have cast us off. Mm -hmm. You have scattered us. You have scattered us. You have been displeased. You have been displeased. Oh, turn yourself to us. Please again. sit down. Amen. What causes God to scatter you? Sin. What? Sin. We have displeased God. How? By sin. And he says, Turn your eye to us one more time. How can God turn his eye to you? There's true only one means. And that is? Repentance. Prayer. Prayer. Through the blood, Prayer. blood of Jesus. Jesus. That's it. The third one. Who's, who should I call? What you when you grow one of from? Wow. So what you when all right. Should I go on? Yeah. Okay. Should I go on and pick somebody else? Okay, we flip the pages again. Flip it. Flip it. Flip your pages. Uh huh. Okay, baby, my catchy, stop. Hey. Lydia, read yours. Where your pump is? Jeremiah 49. Jeremiah chapter 49. That's where you flip to. All right. Let's hear the word of God. This is what the Lord says. Hey, am I the one saying it? No. Is Lydia saying it? No. Lydia, let's hear. Has Israel no sons? Has she Has Israel no sons? It's a question, right? Has, has she no yes? Why then has Molach taken the portions of God? Are you reading where your right thumb was? Okay, read it. Why has Molech taken pos pos possession. Yeah, possession of God? Okay, now it's okay. Now he's asking the questions. Has Israel no sons? 
And Molech is another country. Is taking possession of what Israel has. God is saying, has Israel no sons? If somebody comes to your father's house right now to bully your sisters, uh, I'm talking to uh, Christian. You are the big guy in the house, right? And somebody steps in and begins to bully your sisters. Ah, has Mr. Yamsi no sons? Why has this guy come to bully your sweet sisters? The question is, what are you sitting down there doing? Arise. But Christians, we can arise in power through the blood of Jesus. So there is power in the blood. All that you have been, you gave me a title for my message. This one, I taught you about the difference between a message and a sermon, right? You are going to learn something about the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. amen. Oh, amen. amen. I'm not going to preach, I'm going to teach. So there's room for question. If anything bothers you, ask. We shall learn together. Amen. Amen. Now, the message is the power in the blood of Jesus. Every month, or first Sunday of the month, we come here, we do what we call the Last Supper. Some people partake in it, some people do not. Some people even don't understand what it is. Every day, blah, 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 we drink, drink, drink. What is that? The people still don't have any clue or idea. So the Lord needed upon my heart to teach you this today. And where does the power even lies? Where is the power in this that we are talking about? Now, before you can do anything, you must always go to the beginning, as I taught you this morning. So we are all going to read our Bible in the book of Leviticus chapter 17, verses 11. You flip your pages to the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus. Hmm. Not the New Testament. Eh? If I say I'm there, if I'm not there, you say praise the Lord. Are you there? Yes. Good. I read blood as an atonement. <coughs> in the NIV Bible, it's this in uh, the topic on top there. Now, for the soul of the flesh is in the blood. I myself have put it upon the altar for you to make atonement for your souls. Because it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul in it. Amen. When God made human being, the Bible says his breath in him. Human being become a living soul. Now, the blood that is in you, that is where your soul is. So God said, I have given you the flesh of everything. When you kill a, a, an animal, like a goat or a sheep. That red liquid is what you call blood. The soul of that animal is in that blood. God said you can eat the flesh. Even the bones, crack it. Everyone said he like cracking bones. <laughs> but the blood, don't eat it. The blood, don't drink it. So if you see somebody drinking blood, he's in trouble. Tell him not to drink blood. <laughs> Why? Because the soul, of that animal or that living thing is in the blood. Amen. And whenever you sin, you're supposed to die, right? So instead of you to die, we exchange your soul with another thing. So God says, don't eat the blood. Amen. We are going on. Now, the shadow of the blood, say shadow. 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 Everything that happened in the Old Testament was a shadow. If we say shadow, we say, we mean uh, in our dialect, soon soon. If I put a light here, a source here, and there is an object there, there will be a reflection on the floor. That is the, uh, the, the shadow we are talking about. So all those killing of animals in the Old Testament, it was a shadow for the new things to come. So, the whole the New Testament, every book points towards the great sacrifice that was about to come. And what was this great uh, sacrifice? Jesus. What was it? Jesus. What was the great sacrifice? Jesus. He laid his life as a sacrifice for you and I. Why are we saying that? Those who were covered by the blood of sacrifice, they are set free from the consequences of sin. Those days when you sin, the chief priest will tell you, bring a sheep or a goat. That has no blemish. Blemish means the goat shouldn't be a 
one leg broken or one eye caput. The goat or the sheep must be 100% whole. And when you come, they put it there and you put your hand on it. And then you confess your sins on the animal. And they kill it. That means your sins have been transferred into the animal. So when it's slotted and the blood is gushed out, instead of your blood to gush out, the one of the animal has been replaced for you. Amen. That was the Old Testament background. Okay. What happened next? We can see that the sacrifice of animals was just a temporary arrangement for them. So anytime you sin, you carry one goat. So you know that end of the year, today I'm going to steal. After stealing, I'm going to bully somebody. After bullying somebody, I mean, what they're going to gossip about my friend. After doing that, I'm going to insult somebody. You list all the sins on the line. End of the year, you carry one goat. Say, hey, Pastor Jeffrey, Prince Jeffrey, I come. Yes, my goat. I sin. So instead of me to die, let the goat die for me. Imagine every year you kill one goat. In 10 years, how many goats will you kill? <laughs> and the place you're supposed to do the sacrifice was not close to your house. Eh? All the way to Jerusalem, you're going to walk. So imagine you live in turnout. And Jerusalem was somewhere in Brazos. There is no car. You're going to carry the goat by yourself. <laughs> when you reach there, and if even you are saying, ah, bigger, you take a bigger cow. <laughs> you put the cow at the back of your neck, and then you go there, and you pray there and say, hey, this is my cow. Kill it for me because I sin and sin and sin. Where will you even get the money to buy those things? You see what Christ has done? So, in reality, it's a death of Christ. It is a Christ death that saves people. So, if you are a sinner, this time we are in. You don't need to carry any goods anywhere. Christ has paid the price for you. Amen. So his blood exchanges your blood. His soul exchanges your soul. Do you get understanding to this now? All right. Now we, we can see that sacrifice of animals was just a temporary arrangement in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Now, his death is the reason why God forgives people. The result of Christ's death is that people can have a right relationship with God. So where you read, you said, God has cast us away. He has scattered us. God turned back to us. The only way God can turn back to you is through the death of who? Jesus Christ. Are you following me? All right. Now, let's continue. A sacrifice is defined as an offering up of something precious for a cause or a reason. I want to sacrifice something for a certain reason. Now, I'm offering up my remote control. Please, take it. And uh, I'm giving it to you so that you forgive me for insulting you yesterday. I'm sacrificing something for a reason. The reason is that I insulted her yesterday to many pattern. Okay? Husbands and wife, a wife can mistakenly say a word, especially the Asantis. That word, magnet. You are not allowed to say that word to a man or even to your husband. And you accidentally say it, hey! Open with you. Ah, the woman has to sacrifice something to appease the man. Likewise, the women too. There's a word a man shouldn't say to a woman. When you say it, they will say, go and buy a rapper cloth uh -huh. with some things and pattern. You see, to appease the woman, we call it an offering or a sacrifice. You make an atonement is satisfying someone or something for an offense committed. So imagine who says it's my wife and uh, I did something very terrible. I say, oh, please forgive me. I bought this wrapper from the market to you. Uh, please, will you accept it and let bygones be bygones? She will look at me like that and look at the items. <laughs> because of this one, it's okay. <laughs> then I please her. You understand? So the things I give to her becomes the sacrifice. Amen. This mic is not working. Let me put it somewhere. 
Okay, I can do without it. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, we are not so many. The Leviticus verse can be read more clearly as God said, I have given it to you, the creature's life, which is in his blood, to make atonement for yourselves, covering the offense you have committed against me. So whenever you buy a sheep or a goat, it has blood in it. The soul of that animal in the blood, whenever you kill it, you offer it as an offering unto God. Now this thing had been happening for years, years and generation after generation. The people were not repenting. God, you know that after all, if I do something stupid, at the end of the year, I have to carry my goat. So whilst I'm saying I'm preparing my goat, whilst I'm still I'm preparing my goat, well, what about when you die in the midst of preparation for the goat? You have trouble. So, listen to this. The soul of every sort is in the, in the, in the blood. Leviticus 17, 14. That's why we just read. Now, only you shall not eat the flesh with its life. That is the blood. So God commanded them, when you kill the animal, eat the flesh. Clean the flesh, eat. My the blood which you drink. Why? Because the soul is in the blood. And the blood is what you use to say, God, what I did last week, I insulted my father and mother. It's a sin. Your word said, that shall. And I have decided my honor and father. Therefore, take this good and the blood appease you so that the blood will atone for you. I don't say go and search your mother tomorrow and go and buy a goat and bring it to me. God will not accept that one. Now, if you can, I'll chop it by get nothing back. <laughs> All of the many blood sacrifices that they did in those days, it was a shadow. Say shadow. 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 Of the biggest one that was yet about to come. Because anytime God is about to do something, he brings something before to teach them a lesson. Now, shedding of blood is a substitutionary act. Say substitute. 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 What does it mean? It means something that you use instead of another thing. Replacement. For example, Mount Moriah. God told Abraham, go and sacrifice your one and only son for me. What happened? What happened? Was he obedient? Yes. He took the son. What was the name? They went towards Mount Moriah. He bound his hand. The son said, oh, Papa, you have taken the firewood. You've taken the mess, the the knife, even to cut the throat of the beast. But where is it? Where is the animal? What answer did Abraham give? The God will provide. Is that all? Yeah. No. Yeah. Eh, eh, eh? My son. God will provide. The sheep. Nay. 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 God will provide himself. Yeah. Is it nearby? Himself is there. Don't forget the word himself. It's very important. So when Abraham was about to do that, there was a voice in heaven that said, Abraham, stop. Don't kill the child because now I know you fear the Lord. Now, look into the thicket. There was what? The sheep. There was what? The sheep. Say now that if the you are sheep. sure the sheep. that was caught by the thicket, eh? use that one instead and sacrifice him to me. So that she becomes what? A substitute. You get that one? Mm -hmm. So you, when you sin, you're supposed to die by stoning you. God said, no, bring an animal. When we slaughter the animal, you can go scot free. So Jesus Christ came as a, as a, as a, that is it. So what happened in the Old Testament era in our time, we have a substitute called Jesus. Called Jesus. That's it. Now, are you see where you are coming from? Okay. What next? This is what Jesus meant by dying on the cross. When he said, Tetelesta, it is finished. It is written in John chapter 19, verse 30. When Christ said, it is finished. What was finished? All the books. All the things. All the? No. All the? <laughs> he said, it is finished. What was finished? My words. Read the next slide. Never again, again want the blood on the cross. The animal was finished. It was finished. 
You don't need to carry camel to go and kill it or a or, or, uh, cow. It is finished. Why was it finished, Christian? Because of uh, yeah, the blood. Uh, because of his blood. It has been replaced our blood. Our uh, soul. Amen. You are new. Well, uh, 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 so, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. Who can read it for me? 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Mm -hmm. Flip to the New Testament. We are finished the Old Testament. I told you this morning, we make a cross-reference from the Old to the New. Uh -huh. If you don't have the Bible, add me. Next month, I want to buy five Bibles as a gift for people here. It's in, it's in the New Testament this way. I know. But you are going to no, You turn it upside down. <laughs> hey! I'm reading for 521, please. 2 Corinthians 521. Yes. Now, now he that has wet as for the self seen thing is God. What, what, what are you saying? I have a different verse. Self seen. Yeah. Which version of Bible are you reading, please? Uh, I'm reading from um, this um, New King James version. New King James. All right. Carry on, please. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. Try again. Try again. Oh, uh, coming. Okay. Second Corinthians five twenty one. Yeah, five twenty one. Yeah. Yes. I'm reading again. Now, he that yeah. has worked as for the self same thing is God, who also has given to us the earnest of the Spirit, mm -hmm. since therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent yeah. from the Lord. No, no, you are not there. Oh. So that's why I like written Bible. You flip the pages to it and then you read. Who is there? Please read for me. So he was making a <laughs> If you are there, please, you can stand up and read. <laughs> For he has made him who knew no sin to be sent for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Shadrach, what does your Bible say? The same. The same? Yes. Okay. You have the NIV, right? Okay. God is the same. Yours is also King James. Shadrach, yeah, okay. what do you have? Listen to this, sir. God made him who had no sin to be saved. God made him who had no sin. Which person on this earth had no sin? No. No. Which human being on this earth no. with two hands and two legs had no sin? No. But God made him sin. Who? Jesus. Yes. Oh. Jesus was not on earth? No. Jesus was not in it. When Mary gave birth to Jesus, when did he born him? <laughs> Carry on. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. To be sin for who? Us. To be sin for who? Us. Including you? Yes. Including me? Yes. yes. Carry on. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So are you righteous? <laughs> This is what most people say they fail to answer. Are you righteous? Yes. I'm trying. Nobody's perfect. They begin to complain. <laughs> no. He said he made him who knew no sin to be sinful for us so that we shall be what? Right. The righteousness of who? God. So if Christ had not died, you can never be righteous. So he becomes a substitute for you and me. So you know where we are going now? So those days, animals were used as a substitute. But now Christ, who knew no sin, he was made sin for me and you. So that we shall become the righteousness of who? God. So are you righteous? Yes. Through the blood of Jesus. That's the power. Amen. You understand the story so far? Okay. So but now, there has been a sacrifice that is even more valuable than the death of those animals. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Now, Christ, the Son of God, died so that God can forgive all the most our sins. Christ offered his own blood. 
In the Leviticus where you read, what kind of blood were they offering? Goats. Blood of goats and blood of animals. But in our dispensation, in our time, whose blood is offered for us? Jesus, Jesus Christ's blood. It's more powerful than the blood of goats and the blood of animals. So what is it about the blood which normally think of a uh, protest health that caused Christians to celebrate it? What is it about it? This blood that every day we celebrate, we mention it, Lord Supper, we, we die the Lord with the Lord with it. What is about it? Now listen to this. It's all about Oh, Where you read, he said, God has scattered us. We have displeased him. <clears throat> it takes only one thing for man to get back to God again. Who was the first man to get away from God? Adam. What did he do? He sinned. So, did that affect you? Yes. yes. Did that affect me? Yes. yes. So, for you to come back to God, there's supposed to be a bridge. Because the gap has been made. So, God through everything saw that there's only one thing that can brought mankind to him. So, the power in the blood is it brings a unification. It brings reconciliation. That's the power in the blood. Amen. Amen. Now, this is what I just summarized. So, I'm going to the next one for the time's sake. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. We've read it before. Do you remember? Okay. Who is there to read for me? Now, Christ Jesus. Who? Now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off has been made near by the blood of Christ. You were very afar off. You were nowhere near God. What put us afar off? And what has the blood of Jesus does? Closer. 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 Yeah. Near. Yeah. So, have you entered heaven now? Yes. No. no. <laughs> he has brought us near. Yeah. We are not entered yeah. yet. Yes. So, the things you are going to do must prove that where you were before, in the slave market of sin, the blood has brought you near. Therefore, all those things that you used to do, you need to quit them. All the old style, all the old life, the things that you did that did not please God, mm -hmm. he says, quit them. Mm -hmm. When you quit doing them, now you are in it. So the first thing he does, the blood does it, gives you the power to draw you near, closer to God. The second power that the blood manifests is it gives forgiveness of sins. Back to Leviticus and the Old Testament, you say your words or whatever, you confess to the goat or the animal, the animal is slaughtered, and then you are your sins are covered. But the blood of Jesus, the Bible says, it brings a redemption. It gives the power to forgive sins. So, can I forgive you your sins? No. no. Only who? God. Through the blood. That's the power. Amen. So, Ephesians 1 7 says, in him we have redemption through his blood. Through his blood. So what is the second power of the blood? The second power of the blood which redeems you from your sins by forgiving you. That's the power. So being a Christian, you must know what the blood of Jesus does for you. Otherwise, you come to church and go every night like I say, no. You must know the power of the blood. Amen. Amen. Because Christ shed his blood, God is able to forgive us for our sins and give the punishment that we deserve to Christ. So whilst they were beating him, kneeling him to the cross, you were the one that was supposed to be like that. But our word sucked. They didn't do that one to Christ. So the blood brought you a redemption. Amen. Amen. And any question from these two points? Yes. Yes. Tell us. Uh, the Leviticus version. Mm -hmm. I have light there, and then the one somewhere red. I don't know. So I want to know the difference between life and soul. If okay. Okay. Now, uh, let let's read your Bible. Okay. Leviticus chapter seventeen was it? Read it. Yes. Uh -huh. 
Listen, she's reading Leviticus chapter 11, 17, 11, all right. For the life of the flesh is in your blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Amen. Amen. Mine is, or the uh, amplifier says, for the life of the animal soul is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement, reason of the life which is it represents. When we say somebody is a living soul, if you die, can you move? No. You can't even breathe, right? What happens to your blood? It freezes up. So the soul is inside the blood. And then, some people who have said they died and they went to heaven, your soul will leave your body. Your second life proceeds from there. So when you go to heaven, you don't go with this, your... You are came before God, God say, hey, because you did well, go and sit in my throne of heaven. Why? The blood has spoken for that soul. But if you are unbeliever, hmm, or you still remain in your sin, you die in sin, you'll be judged straight to where? Hellfire. That time, the blood cannot save you anymore. It's too late. So the atonement is done whilst you are alive, whilst your blood is circulating and your soul is still in you, whilst you have the chance to repent. That's why you are a living soul. So the life you lead, you live it through your blood and the soul. You got that? All right. Any question from these two first points? Should I go on? All right. We are not going to read the Matthew. You move on further. Okay. He said, this man, God, okay, it's important we do this one. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. When Jesus Christ was about to die, he had the last Passover meal with the disciples. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he took up bread and broke it and said, take it, this man, body. And he took up a cup. He blessed and said, this is my blood. Pour out for many. For the for the for the oh for the uh, who is doing the sinning? So if you cannot walk, can you go? Can you do? Can you go and steal? The soul in you has now life to go and steal from at the time. So when you are going, the soul get a message from God. Hey, Mr. Man, you went to church last time. Pastor said, don't steal. Oh, let me go and steal small. I only small better I'm going to steal. There's a communication going on. When you stole, you were watching and then you were running and a car hates you. <coughs> Where will you go? Yeah. Why? That time, that moment <coughs> cannot more work for you. Because whilst you have the life, that's where the blood speaks for you. So that you change from the bad things we do. Amen. Amen. So, this one, when you continue from verse 29, that's what we represent it with the last supper. So every Sunday we come, or every last first Sunday of the month, we say we are drinking the blood of Jesus. It gives you life again. There's going to be a substitution for your blood. Amen. Now, the next point is number three. It cleanses your mind. Your mind. Read it. Conscience. Last you did hear about conscience? Yes. Let me ask a question here. Once upon a time, there was a woman who was caught in adultery. <laughs> you went to night, night shift? Hello? Are you here? I'm talking to you. Oh, okay. I'm here in case you forget. Now, we heard about consciousness last time. And the book of John says there was a woman who was caught in adultery. I wonder where the man was. They brought this woman to Jesus and said, Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery. According to the law of Moses, we should stone her and kill her. Now, what did you say? If it was you, what would you say? Christian. Mm -hmm. He says, said, which one of you have never sinned? 
If you haven't, throw the first stone. And the Bible says they were judged by their conscience. Eh? So you know you did this, you did that. You two, you're going to cast a stone. The conscience judged. Last time I was teaching one Friday evening how Satan speaks to us and how God speaks to us, right? God speaks to us through our conscience. So if you did something wrong last year and you know your conscience is still causing you to feel guilty, the blood is there to speak for you. He said, girl, don't worry. I've already forgiven you. Don't ponder about the guilt anymore. So your conscience are now cleared. It is not saying you are going to do something wrong. You know it's wrong. You are waiting for the bus to... Where does your boyfriend live? Where does your boyfriend live? Arendong. Okay. You are staying there at the bus stop waiting 9.30. You know you are going to your boyfriend. You're not even, why, what are you going to do there? Your conscience is speaking to you. Baby, go back home. <laughs> oh, it may seem so airy. The blood is not going to cleanse this conscience, eh? <laughs> not this one. You step into the bus, one hour. Chat, you come around, even on the bed. It may be you have missed my hook. The app, your conscience say, get back home. For God's sake, tomorrow is Sunday. Today is Saturday, you are going to do this thing. And tomorrow you come to church. Ah, I miss you. Let me go just once. You cha 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 cha. You ring the bell. Your conscience spoke to you. Hello, Scott. My colleague. Finish. I should have come. You should have come. When your conscience was telling you that time you could have left the bus stop and walked home, you didn't. When you sat in the bus, you could have stopped at the next stop. You did it. Your conscience was speaking to you. You finished everything. Now you want the blood just to kill your conscience? Uh, you understand? But God is so merciful. After everything is done, you regret and you repent of it. Lord, I'm not going to do this anymore. When he calls me, I won't pick it. Pray, pray. Pray, pray. God, I've confessed my sister. I don't want to do this thing no more. He's still calling me. God, what should I do? Okay, let me take this one more time. She can't come here for a camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the repentance then? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you here with me? Are you following me? Amen. So after you have repented and moved away from those things and focused your mind, last time I did finish, they find right repentance to you, right? Yes. Huh. All these things, they are good there. Eh? You turn your focus back to God again. God renews you, gives you a new spirit, you want a new path. Satan will come and say, hey, you are blowing in tongues. You remember last time you went to Arendong, we think I didn't see you. Satan will bring those things back again. That's where the blood works. It cleans your conscience, you know. I knew I was guilty. By the blood of Jesus, he has purified me. I have repented. I've changed my focus. So no matter what you do, I'm not going to let me feel down by that conscience anymore. The blood of Jesus has cleansed my conscience according to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 40. So Satan, get it behind me. Then shake up and you move on again. That's what you're talking about here. That's what the power of the blood can do. That's happened to me many times. Maybe you. I don't know. There's somebody I know, when you go to shop, he doesn't feel, he doesn't feel good. Hey. Yes. Yeah. When you go to shop, he must steal something. No matter what it is, he will steal. Just for the kick. Oh, I'll do it again, I'll do it again. The next day, you go and steal something. Uh -huh. Amen. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 says, Even though all your minds have been corrupted by sin and seared with pot of iron, the blood of Jesus will cleanse it. Hmm? When you say it is seared with hot of iron, it means those days when you buy a slave, you want to mark that the slave is yours. Yeah. You make a symbol, you put a symbol in hot fire. Yeah. Then you press it against his skin. Yeah. To burn the person's skin. <laughs> yeah. So when the wound is gone, the mark will be there. So whenever you see the mark there, you know, this is my slave. 
that's how sin has made our minds. Like a tattoo on your skin. You can never remove it. But when the blood of Jesus comes in, he clears all those things from the hard disk of your mind, giving you a new mind again. That's the power of the blood. Amen. Amen. Point number uh, five. We progressively cleanse from more sins and more sins. Not only are we forgiven from sin, but we are also sanctified through the blood. It washes you. Mm -hmm. After you have done everything, you repent. Not ten times a day. You repent. Nay, you repent, you change your focus. When you change your focus, you go, that's where the cleansing takes place. Not whilst you are busy with it. No. When you ring the bell, he says, wash me up. Hello, it's got in the cake. Eh? Jesus, brother. Jesus, brother, doesn't waste like that. No. You finish everything, you are coming back home. In the bars, you are praying. No. Don't wash. <laughs> are you here with me? All right. Number five. The power of the blood is we can use it to conquer the accuser of the brethren. Why is accuser? You go and stand before say, hey, you are open Bible. Last time you did what you did, now you are open Bible. Shame on to you. Look at you. You. <laughs> Satan will be flipping west, bringing a picture of what you did. You know you are talking about it. And he didn't hear. Now you are smiling with him. You, you are, you are a hypocrite. Satan will be now ringing bell in your head. What does the book of Revelation says? And they conquered him, that Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So you can say, Satan, get thee behind me. The blood of Jesus has washed me clean. Yes, I did what I did, but now I'm sorry. I have repented and God has forgiven me by the blood of Jesus. I have made a new focus. So Satan, get thee. Damn. Is that what you're saying? Okay, we shall see. Satan will leave you. But if you don't go back and do it again, no. that's the power of the blood. Amen. The last point here. Because of Christ's sacrifice and pouring out of his blood on our behalf, we can track the righteousness of Christ and not our own righteousness because we are accused by the enemy. Every day, Satan stands before God and says, Hey, God, you see the girl you call air hostess? He's dating one guy in the church who. Huh? God said, I know. What is your problem with this? No. I told you, you know. I know. What is your problem? And then God is going to cover you with the righteousness of Christ because of the blood. So that you will have the power to stop it. Because on your own, you can't stop certain things you are doing. No, on your own, you can't. So always pray and apply the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I have number six. It rescued us out of our sinful way. Maybe your lifestyle was every day in this school, like I used to do. Thursday, I go for a student and avant. Friday, Frank is an avant. Saturday, R&B avant. Sunday, showbiz. Four days a week, disco. Hey! <laughs> and bad stuff. But the blood of Jesus said, no, let me rescue this guy from this pit because I need him. So if you read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 19, he said, You were ransomed from the futile ways, inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. In Leviticus, where we read, back in those days, the sheep or the animal is a substitute for you. In that time, it's not gold or silver, but what? But what? But what? I went this way. By the precious blood of Read it all together. The precious blood of Christ. Ah, like the lamp of God without blemish or spot. So you are precious. You are valuable. Oh boy, Amen. You are costly more than anything that this world can even be compared to. We are we are priceless. Christ's blood is you can't compare anything to it. Like I, as I said earlier on, if you sin, you carry your boat. Every day you carry your boat. How many boats can you carry in a year? You have to work hard to, and those are the goats and the sheep, they are very expensive. And also fat. Yeah, very heavy. <laughs> so compared to the present part of Christ, the most valuable things on earth, like silver and gold, are reduced to meaningless, they are all perishable things. 
So, brothers and sisters of God, we are privileged to have Christ's blood. There is power in it. That power can do many things that your mind cannot even understand. This is because the blood of Jesus gives Christians salvation for our souls. Through number one, forgiveness of sins. Number two, access to God. Those days, the priest must do everything for you. Eh? But these days, you go down, you need to go direct. No connection man. No visa. No passport. All through the blood of Jesus. That's the power. And again, be true over the enemy. The enemy will break things along along your path. Like Nana, he's a really, very handsome young guy. She tell me, say, hey girl, she that guy, the basketball winner. Mm -hmm. Push it to you. <laughs> and now look at again, you see now, you know, you don't match my standard. Hey. I am bought and covered by the blood. Please, excuse, excuse me. me. <laughs> and now we'll walk on. Let's have one another. <laughs> So the blood of Jesus gave you victory over all these sins. Yeah. But if you compare, if you compare the things you do to Christ's blood, ah, come on, it's far, far, say far, far, far. far. The next point is the power to live with a clear conscience. So when you sit at the bus stop waiting for the bus, I like this example, though. And then. Uh, your coach says, hey, Sandra, you are going. Sandra said, I am going to Brother Jeffrey. Not to do anything, but to study the word of God with Brother Jeffrey. So my conscience, I clear through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Jesus will join the bus and go, hello, Brother Jeffrey. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you not praise the Lord, greetings. We'll let Brother Jeffrey go down. <laughs> <laughs> if he is waiting with any kind of mind, you're going to change it. You live very splendid today. I believe the enemy of God visited you last night. Uh -huh. This guy will say, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh -huh. The last point is, something that good and silver item in the Old Testament could not do, the blood of Jesus is doing right now. Amen. So when we set a symbol like this here, and we say we are going to partake the Lord's Supper. If I were you, I will not exempt myself from it. Because it does miraculous things that those animals that cannot do. That's why we sing this song. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me open again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious Lord, that makes me white as snow. No. You know, you know that song, yeah? I don't know. That's why I put the lyrics there. So I think it's a pepper issue. It's not about you. You can't, you can't teach us this one. I don't know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood. I know, I know my wife, you can laugh at me. Well. <laughs> but at least I have a clear conscience. Amen. So later on, we learn this song. So, people of God, this is the end of our today's uh, uh, teachings or message. You have to understand where you came from, where you are now, and where you are going. Blood of goats and animals couldn't do the job. So it was a, just a substitute. Amen. But Christ has taken your place. It's a privilege. Bad on your head, sir. Let's pray. Oh, I'm sorry. Question. You said we shouldn't drink it, right? So why do you then drink it? Okay. The blood of Yeah, we should. That was the blood of Aiman. Not this. Leviticus 17, he says. You can eat the flesh, the flesh, the flesh, by the bones, but don't eat the blood. Why? The blood is an atonement for you. So if you drink the blood, what are you going to use you to atone? When Jesus came, he said, you know what? Push those things away. My blood is better. Now, do this one to remember what I have done. Hmm? Do this one to remember what I have done. This is not a blood of goods. By the blood of who? Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, Amen. Mm -hmm. Question, yes. I have a question. Like, um, in the Old Testament, uh, these animals, 
and the visa was sacrificed, mm -hmm. like, uh, you never get them back, right? So why did Jesus resurrect after I continue for us? Because 